Hi, uh, welcome to this tutorial on accounting basics. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk about the theoretical functions of accounting and uh, the functions of accountants and why they both exist. Uh, so first of all, I want to say this is the first recording I've done in a few years, so I'm sorry if I'm a bit rusty. And secondly, I'm in a new location uh, compared to previous recordings. And nearby, they're constructing a block of units. So if you can hear a little bit of construction noise in the background, um, then I do apologize. Anyway, here we go. All right, so what are we going to cover in this tutorial? First of all, there's this introduction. Then we're going to talk about what, what is accounting. Then we're going to talk about what do accountants do. And finally, we're going to talk about the three functions of accounting. And then we'll have a conclusion. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so what is accounting? Essentially, accounting is an information system. Now, whether an information system is software or specifically IT related, or simply some sort of manual or paper information system, it doesn't really matter um, in this case. Accounting is an information system. Now, this information system primarily uses financial data. So things that involve money and finances, such as transactions uh, that have occurred in a business or an organization, uh, financial statements that are uh, denominated by dollars or uh, euros or so forth. And also this information can also include non-financial data. Now that's kind of important. Many people think um, accounting only involves money, but you'll find that many uh, accounting reports, specifically in management accounting, uh, do involve non-financial data. So you may have a management accounting report like a uh, materials variance report, and they might have raw material inputs in those management accounting reports. And uh, that involves um, specifically non-financial data such as raw material. Okay, so when we say it's an information system, uh, this accounting information system has to be able to collect the inputs. So it has to be able to collect transactions or collect events. And uh, also then has to be able to process, store, retrieve and analyze those events and transactions and then generate reports and essentially produce the outputs. And this is very similar to other types of information systems. Okay, accounting is used in almost every type of organization, whether they're private organizations, public sector entities, or nonprofit organizations. Uh, it's, we'll talk about why accounting information and accounting information systems are so prevalent when we talk about the functions of accounting towards the end. Okay, so next up, what do accountants do? So accountants is, uh, interact with this particular information system and they communicate the results they get from that system. So whether the information system is a manual, perhaps in a paper ledger, like in those old uh, ledger notebooks that you may see from um, uh, very outdated news agencies, or in a software system like you'd see today, or even um, millennia ago, they would carve accounting information to pieces of stone. Um, an accountant needs to be able to record, classify, summarize, and communicate uh, data into this information system and uh, analyze the results. So they have to record transactions, they have to be able to collect the inputs uh, that will go into the, the information system, they have to classify the inputs. So they have to say, okay, here's a receipt, uh, What's wh what part of the information system um, does this involve? Then they might have to summarize the data. So they might have to say, okay, well, my CEO doesn't wanna see 100,000 receipts, all he wants to see is a summary of all of those receipts that I can give him in a five page report. Um, he may have to, uh, an accountant, he or she may have to analyze uh, what's in the information system. So accountants aren't simply uh, robots. They often uh, have to use their analytical processes. They have to know not only what's going into the information system, but also how to read the language underlying business. So they may have to uh, analyze their reports and then they have to communicate it. You'll find that most uh, higher level jobs in the accounting field aren't really about number crunching, it's more about the communication side. So whether they're communicating to clients or to a manager or to uh, investors, it's about turning what's in the information system in the accounting language uh, into something that's actionable and useful for the people who aren't as skilled in accounting as that particular accountant is. 
okay? And uh, there's a vast array of uh, accounting roles, specialties, and levels of responsibility in general, so I can't cover everything here, but um, you can, if you had to classify them, which you probably shouldn't, they could probably form uh, accountants perform their tasks um, focusing on either financial accounting, management accounting, taxation, audit, insolvency, or corporate finance. So, again, it's wrong to put these in mutually exclusive buckets, but you'll find most accounting specialists, if you go out into an accounting career, um, normally tend to gravitate towards one of these areas. Yes, again, there's overlap. Depending on the size of the firm, there may be, may be more overlap or less overlap, but uh, generally you become a specialist in one of these fields before you uh, want to move around perhaps for uh, career mobility. And in general, uh, uh, when you're working as an accountant, there are four main areas that you can work in. You can work at a specialist accounting firm, and that's known as practice, like public practice or private practice. And that's where you get your KPMGs and your EYs, everything down to your local uh, CA or CPA at a smaller office. That's where you work with clients, you may do business advice, and uh, like you might help them out with their tax, you might help them out with restructuring things in their small business. It's a, it's a whole basket of choices, but essentially you work as a specialist accountant and you provide advice to your clients. Now you may work in a finance team within a business, and that's known as commerce, that's where you work perhaps in a large organization, like a large, perhaps in a large retail organization or a large manufacturing organization, and they have their finance team in-house. That, that's probably led by the CFO, the Chief Financial Officer, and there are specific managers underneath them, and they handle all of the accounting functions within that particular business and only that particular business. Now, there's a similar sort of role within a government department. It's a very similar role to the previous one, except you're in a public sector organization. And also, some people choose to be a teacher, and they teach accounting in an institution, and they become uh, academic accountants. And they may work at universities or technical colleges or um, other tutors and so forth. Okay, so this is, this is the heart of the lesson. These are the theoretical functions of accounting. Why does accounting exist? What led to the development of accounting in the first place? And when you study accounting, you'll be generally told that uh, there are three specific functions to accounting. We have to remember that all these involve the idea that resources are scarce and need to be allocated well or efficiently or optimally, okay? So if we all had as much money as we want and there was infinite uh, resources on the planet, then accountants probably wouldn't exist. So let's embed these three functions based on the idea that we have, uh, have to make choices between where we spend our money, have to make choices where we spend our time, and we have to make sure whatever we spend our time and money on that we do it well. Okay, so taking that on board, now the, the three functions of accounting are the decision-making function, the contracting function, and the stewardship function. And we're going to go over them each one by one. Okay, the decision-making function. All right, so people in organizations need to optimize decision-making when deciding where to allocate their resources and how to control the performance of these resource allocations. And accounting information can greatly help this. Okay, so that's the general preamble. So we have to decide where we spend our money, where we spend our time between choices, and that's pre-making the choice. And then post-making the choice, we have to make further decisions about controlling uh, the management of those particular allocations. So we have to make sure that after we've made the choice, then we have to make further decisions that whatever we hoped would happen is actually happening. And how do, how do we get a hold of all of this? Um, accounting information, whether they're management, management accounting reports or financial accounting reports, greatly assist in this decision making. And this function grew out of um, the Industrial Revolution. So pre-Industrial Revolution, uh, life is pretty simple. You um, had a house. You had your family, you had your kids, um, you probably had a small farm that was right outside your house. So all you ever did was tend to your farm, 
what you grew, uh, you ate, and if there's any left over, you might walk 100 meters and sell it at the market or something. Not, not too complicated. But once the Industrial Revolution, um, the ownership and control of assets and resources became separated, and the scale of projects became more difficult to manage and control. So there we were in our farm, suddenly Industrial Revolution occurs, well not so suddenly, but um, it occurs, and now we don't just own a farm, we may own a factory, 10 farms, our employees might not be our children who are sleeping in the same house as us, but we may have 50 employees in another part of the country, and we not, might not be selling, you know, 40 potatoes at a market, we might be selling millions of dollars of potatoes in a foreign country. So all those easy things we could do in the past by looking out the window and telling our kids what to do or doing it ourselves and watching over it, it was, it was, it was impossible once the Industrial Revolution. So we needed a form of standardized communication. We needed to know what was my factory doing in the south of the country uh, last month? What about the north of the country? How did the, how did the factory in the north of the country compare to that in the south of the country? Um, so the accounting information became that standardized communication methods, both to make decisions and control our decisions. All right, secondly, the contracting function. All right, so to remember, remember the idea that now we have our, not just our children working for us or ourselves working for us on the farm, but now we have a large enterprise and we may have 50 or 500 or 5,000 employees working for us. So how do we manage and influence and control these large numbers of people that are spread over large distances where even larger sums of resources are at stake? You know, <laughs> I imagine uh, if you were growing up in, you know, 15th century um, farming community and uh, your parents told you to um, chop the wood, there wasn't much of a choice. But if, you, if you're living post-industrial revolution and you've got a CEO on the other side of the world, um, what's making you do the right thing when you're being employed by them? What's actually controlling you and influencing you? And this is where uh, accounting info can again help because you can embed accounting info into these employment contracts. And the accounting info within the contracts can overcome the agency problems. Now, the agency problems uh, is is a technical term or an academic term for the situation I, I just described earlier in that ownership of the resources, yet the control of the resources, like the managers and the employees, they're separated. So they often have different motives. The uh, managers and the employees probably want to do as little work and get paid as much as possible. While the owners of the resources probably want the agents to do as much work as possible for as little money as possible. <laughs> so they, they, have, they have different incentives. So by introducing accounting information into our contracts, we can perform bonding mechanisms and monitoring mechanisms. And these are the two techniques to overcome agency problems. Now, an example of a bonding mechanism, um, let's go back to, uh, well, forget farming, let's go to mining, okay? So I'm in Sydney at the moment, and um, uh, it, this is post-industrial revolution, and I want to start a mine. I've um, analyzed the accounting data, and I've made the decision that I don't want to start a mine in Sydney. I, in Australia, I want to start a mine in South Africa. So I employ a mine manager in South Africa to uh, open my mine and operate my mine. Now, an example of a bonding mechanism we can embed into his contract is we can say, okay, my manager, if our mine generates, you know, X amount of profit this year, then I will give you a bonus. So we're bonding the mine manager and my motivations. We're saying, I want profit as the owner. Now, if you, if, if you give me profit, then you'll get a bonus. So essentially, we're bonding our um, motivations so we want the same thing. That's... Uh, one example there. The other example is the monitoring mechanisms. So even though I'm using the bonding mechanism to get my mine manager to want the same thing as I do, that, that's not the only way to influence and control his behavior, his or her behavior, I beg your pardon. Um, uh, we can include uh, monitoring mechanisms using accounting inf information into the contracts. I can say, okay, my manager, I'll only employ you 
if you send back monthly uh, mine operation reports back to me in Sydney. So each month, he would uh, get the accounting information, he would do a quick management accounting information report, and he would email me the back to Sydney. And then I could get the report, and I could monitor what his performance was like over the previous month. And that's how I use that accounting information as a monitoring mechanism. And that's the second way we can uh, introduce the contracting function using accounting information. Okay, and the final uh, uh, function of accounting is the stewardship function. Now, this one predates the pre two functions, although it's kind of similar. So the previous two functions of decision making and contracting uh, were all post-industrial revolution and kind of involved the employee-employer relationship and the profit motive. Uh, the stewardship function predates that and goes all the way back to the times of kings and queens and lords and ladies and uh, and and so forth. It was when um, one person or one organisation would own all the resources and not out of employee-employer relationship. Someone will be given a certain piece of those resources to manage. So there may be a king um, in London or a queen in London and they would say, okay, uh, Lord, Lord Jamie, you can look after uh, this area of land and as long as you take care of it well and you're a good steward of that land and, you know, uh, pledge allegiance to uh, the king and queen, then um, you can you can maintain that land and get a nice life of it. Uh, go enjoy that, Lord Jamie. Um, so it still involves similar ideas to the previous two. Uh, we're trying to control the behavior of Lord Jamie, who's looking after the land, and we want him to take care of the land. We don't want him to trash the land. We don't want him to let it overgrow, and um, we want him to take care of the land and uh, we also wanted to report back how the land is going back to uh, the king and the queen or the bishop in case of a religious organization. So how can both parties assess if the steward is doing a good job? How can the king or the queen or the bishop know that the steward, how can each of them communicate saying, yes, are you doing a good job? And the steward goes, yes, I am doing a good job. Like, here we go, here's some information. So they use this accounting information um, Okay, my slide is a bit wrong there. So accounting information within contracts can provide the communication and control inf control mechanism. Just remove that uh, with within contracts. So just um, that slide to read, accounting information can provide this communication and control mechanism. So uh, we may have uh, the accounting information such as tax receipts for the land, agriculture output and distribution. You know, if, if it's a particular area of the country or land, there may be gold treasure stored there. So they could report back how much gold is, is on that piece of land uh, using, using accounting information. And they may even report on soldiers and armory available for wars. So the king who's in his castle in the capital would know um, perhaps how much gold is located everywhere in, the, in his kingdom. All right. And so you see it predates, and it's a bit of a different relationship, but it, it, they're, they're similar sorts of ideas. Um, yeah, feel free to comment if um, that within contracts section has thrown you off. Um, I should have double checked that. You know how you always, you, you make mistakes, um, not when you do typos when they've got the red lighting, red line showing you that you've made a mistake. It's, it's when you it's when you include words that are spelled correctly and are obviously grammatically correct and now uh, yeah, you completely miss them. So I'm sorry about that. Okay, so let's uh, have a quick review. What we covered today was what is accounting? And that's essentially an information system. What do accountants do? They interact with the information system and communicate the results. And what are the three functions of accounting? That is decision making, contracting, and stewardship. Okay. All right, uh, that's it. I uh, hope it helped. Best of success in your exams and your studies, and if you choose accounting as a major. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel. A uh, button should appear soon that you can click on, uh, or you could watch uh, another one of my tutorials now. Or even if you don't want to do either of those, just give me a like, and that would be really good as well. And finally, feel free to comment below if anything needs clarification or if you just want to say hello. So um, it doesn't have to be a one-way conversation here. If... Uh, I can't answer like specific uh, assignment questions. You'd be surprised how many people just send me their homework and assignment questions as uh, and want me to and want me to um, 
give them the answers, but I can't do that. But if you need any clarification where you can um, help yourself, then um, feel free to comment below. And um, yeah, hope to hear from you. All right, thanks very much.